Well, hello guys. Today we will talk about Lelouch v Britannia. Lelouch is the most beloved anime main character by far. That's the reason why he tops the mall list for 17 years now. Mostly everyone agrees that he is the best main character. The only main character who comes close is Guts from Berserk. Mainly this is because of how great Lelouch is. He is neither all good like Naruto, Luffy or Goku. Not all bad like Light Yagami. His journey makes you question various things. So let's take a deep dive into his journey. When Lelouch was young, he saw his mother dying right in front of his eyes, and that also affected his sister. When he confronted his father about it, he just brushed him off and sent him and his sister to Japan as a peace treaty, which made Lelouch angry. That day, his goal became revenge on his father and a better world for Nanuli. His sister. This traumatic incident fueled his anger to the point where he can kill a man without getting psychologically affected. Seven years later, the Britannian Empire attacked the state of Japan too, which made him even more angry towards his father and the Britain Empire. And thus, one more goal added to his list: a separate free nation for Japan. Many people say that Lelouch's main goal was his revenge, and he often did bad things to achieve that, which is just plain wrong on so many levels. It also drags down Lelouch's character. Lelouch's character wasn't like Thorfinn. Oh, I want revenge. Oh no, revenge is bad. It wasn't that simple. Code Geass never criticized taking revenge. Code Geass' main theme was: Does the goal justify the means? Now let's talk about the goals of Lelouch. First of all, Lelouch's main goal was making a better world for Nanli. If that revenge will cost him the life of his sister, then he will abandon that mission, as we saw at the end of season one. His other goal was revenge, as you already know, and a separate free nation for Japan. Lelouch understands the pain of Japanese people, as their lives were also affected by the Britannian Empire, just like his life was. So he accepts the responsibility of giving them a captain and a war tactical master. Now let's come to the first philosophy of Lelouch. Lelouch thinks that in order to survive, you have to. Put on a mask that will save you from getting killed. At first, Lelouch just had two faces. One, Lelouch Rampage, which was totally his fake persona, and his true personality, which was Zero, a true leader of freedom fighters. By the time Lelouch also learned that the world isn't just black and white, and he understood that. That's why he was against any Japanese revolt group who would harm innocent Britannian people, and promised that in his free Japan, Britannians can live freely too. So those were his main goals. He wanted to make a better and a safer world for his sister, take revenge on his father, and create an independent nation of Japan. But the problem came when he noticed that he wasn't going far in this way, and he needs to change his methods. And this is where we came to the main theme of this show: Does the end justify the means? And we can see that in episode seven, he sacrificed his own soldiers to reach his goal. This is where the symbolism for chess started, where he was the king and he would use others as pawns. And thus, he states his famous dialogue: "To defeat the evil, you have to become a greater evil." Now, even Zero became his fake persona. He wasn't honest when he was Zero. He lied to his comrades and trusted no one. Now, Lelouch is a very logical and less trusting person. He never trusts anyone and thus tries to reveal less and less. Because when he acted emotionally, he was beaten and thrown out by his own father. And from that moment, he only believed in himself and never opened up with anyone, even with Kellen, who was also living a double life like him. Now he did open up with Cici a bit, but not because he had a good relationship with her, but because it was logical, as Cici wants Lelouch to be alive to fulfill her goal. I will come to Cici and Kellen later. And that was the reason he opened up with CC because it wouldn't cost him anything. But the bond wasn't there, and that's why having these masks and playing so many roles exhausted him. Which is quite realistic, as the more fake we become, the less happy we will be. Now his biggest obstacle came: Euphemia. Euphemia was in a good position. And she tried to bring the people of Japan and Britannia together, and that was a bad news for Lelouch, as this would pacify the people of Japan, and thus he would have no army to fight against the Britannians. So he planned to shoot himself and make it chaotic again to make Japanese people rebellious again. But Euphemia convinced him, telling him that this is just the beginning, and they will get more benefits later on, which convinced Lelouch not to do anything. And then comes one of the worst scenes of Code Geass. Lelouch just choked at the very moment his powers. Amplified, and you all know what happened. This scene is such a plot convenience. It's just there to make things worse for Lelouch, even if it makes no sense. Anyways, let's move on to the dynamics of.
of Lelouch. First we have Lelouch and Suzaku. Now as I have stated, the ideology of Lelouch was that to defeat the evil you have to become a greater evil. But Suzaku was the opposite of that and thought the way you achieve your goal does matter. Now Suzaku is of course very easy to hit, but he is a good and realistic character. We can see how unintentionally he is the biggest hypocrite of the show. He was very much like Gandhi. To prevent war, Suzaku would even kill people from the oppressed group. He even killed his own dad so he wouldn't retaliate against the oppressive Britannian Empire. That was the logic of Suzaku, which was pretty stupid and he deserves all the hate he gets, not to mention how often he ruined Lelouch's plan. Lelouch and Suzaku are also a metaphor for humanity. The show tries to tell us again and again how good they are when they are a team. They can achieve great things together but just because of their different ideologies they became enemies and are a great obstacle to each other even though they have the same goal which is quite same as humanity. We can achieve great things together but we will always be fighting each other because we have different ideologies. Now let's come to the two main girls of the show. Kellen and Cece. Kellen and Cece are very different from each other. Cece is a girl who never experienced true freedom, but she also has no desire to achieve it like Lelouch or Kellen. Cece had a pretty messed up life where she was enslaved by many people. We can see this in the flashback scenes or when she reverted to her old self, where she even took Lelouch's joke seriously and had PTSD from her beatings. But even when she gained the Gia's powers, instead of rebelling against her oppressors, she just wanted to be loved by many people and live a happy life. But because of the Gia's power, everything seemed fake and actually it was. It didn't make her happy and then we saw how she was stuck with this immortality and endless cycle of life. Meanwhile, Lelouch was completely opposite. He was a rebel, the symbol of resistance and justice against the evil Britannian empire. Lelouch wanted to take revenge on his father but he also wanted to free the oppressed. And thus he wanted to free Cece, not from the physical world but her mental freedom, where she would die happily and not force Hopefully. At first, Lelouch and Cece's relationship was like business partners. He knew that she could help and vice versa. And then finally we got to the scene where Cece's wish was about to be fulfilled. But Lelouch couldn't accept that. As I have already mentioned, he wanted her to be free from inside and live a good life instead of this. Even though Lelouch does some bad stuff to reach his goal, he is a good person from inside and wants the best for his loved ones and even for the strangers who are oppressed. He can empathize with them because he went through the same thing when he was a child. He wanted Cece to fight and rebel instead of just giving up and accepting her fate. And thus the words touched Cece. She changed her decision which also reflects that their relationship changed before that and they got closer for real instead of just being like business partners. Lelouch once said that she is an evil girl as she gives these powers to people which ruin their lives for her own selfish wish, in anger which deeply hurt Cece. That's why later in the show she asked Lelouch if she had ruined his life with these powers and he replied that she just gave him powers and everything after that was his decision, which made her smile and happy from inside, maybe for the first time in her life. She said that he was the best person she had ever met. Then she moved forward and so did Lelouch and they were about to kiss but Kellen interrupted which is a callback to the scene where CC interrupted Kellen and Lelouch's kiss before. Now let's talk about Kellen. Kellen and Lelouch's dynamic is quite opposite as they both are quite similar when it comes to philosophies. Both Lelouch and Kellen were rebellious. They wanted to take revenge on the oppressive power that had ruined their lives and the lives of their loved ones. They both craved freedom and a better world. People say that Kellen only loved Zero and not Lelouch, but that's completely false. At first, Kellen always doubted that Lelouch was Zero. She had her instincts that this isolated guy was actually a masked vigilante who goes out and rebels. Now Kellen does love Zero because he's exactly what she needed, a guy who can help her rebel against the government. Kellen never thought that she could win this battle and was ready to die, but Zero with his talent gave her hope that she could actually win and that's why she admired Zero. She always thought that he was actually Lelouch and Lelouch knew it. But as I've mentioned, Lelouch didn't trust anyone and was just moved by logic. 
He wanted to hide his identity as revealing his identity may cost him later. So he did something that's completely opposite of Zero. To make Canon hate him, he told her this line that we shouldn't do anything to change the evil in the world and just watch it if it ain't bothering us. Which angered Canon and she slapped him. Here Lelou said something that he didn't really believe in. As we know, he is very rebellious. This was the moment Kalen stopped liking Lelouch or doubting that he is Zero, as Zero was the symbol of resistance and justice. So it is quite wrong when people say that Kalen didn't love Lelouch. Kalen didn't love the side of the Lelouch that Lelouch presented to her, which was a fake personality. Kalen didn't love that fake Lelouch, and that's why she got shocked and heartbroken that Lelouch was indeed the Zero, because whatever she thought was a lie. Zero is a guy who lied to her. Lelouch was the one she hated, and Zero was the guy she loved. But who was real Lelouch? She didn't know. Was it the one who doesn't care about anyone else but himself and his revenge, or was it the one who wants to free the oppressed? Then, in the next season, in first episode, Kalen saw Lelouch, Lelouch who doesn't have any memory, doesn't know her, and doesn't have any Kias powers. When this Lelouch saw Kalen in trouble, who was at that time a stranger to him, he tried to help her out even though he had no powers. Basically, Lelouch stood up for the weak to protect a girl from a bully slash oppressor, which made Kalen realize that indeed he was lying at that time, and the true Lelouch. Lelouch is the one she fell in love with, the one who stands up for the weak even if all the odds are against him. Then they reunited and Lelouch started teasing and flirting with her like he did before and Kellen tried to connect with the real Lelouch now. She also motivated and reminded him of his responsibility whenever he was down and felt low to take up the responsibility that is Zero, and liked it when he acted like Zero and understood his role. And then she fell on Lelouch, which brought them closer. Lelouch asked her after all this to come back to school as a normal friends again, friends who teased and flirted with each other. Now in this scene, Karen actually connected with the real Lelouch. The Lelouch from the very beginning when she thought he was Zero but wanted to confirm. Also, Karen was the only one with whom he talked about what he will do after all the fights, after their war will be over, when their lives will be normal. And thus they both proceeded to kiss but they were interrupted by Cece. When Kellen got kidnapped, she had a conversation with Nanuli about Lelouch's past. Kellen got to know more about the real Lelouch and connected with him as she noticed that he was quite similar to her, avenging their loved one's death and rebelling against the evil regime. Lelouch did the same when he saw her mother and wanted her to have a free and happy life with her mother. That's what he whispered in her ear when he told the Black Knights that he used them. The difference between Cece and Kellen is that Cece never wanted to fight off her trauma and fight for a better life. So Lelouch again and again motivated her to, but Karen was already fighting for a better life, so Lelouch didn't have to tell her. And then in the lift scene, Karen asked him about his mother and his sister, which was a sign that they were going to get closer on a personal level. But then the Black Knights and Britannian soldiers came and they never got to have their last talk. But they did have their last kiss. Karen said in season 1 that she was saving her kiss for her love. And in the end, she shared a kiss with a Lelouch, thus expressing her love for him. Now I will get into the ending and why it's bad, but let me know in the comments which ship do you like more. I like Lelouch and Kellen more now because they felt more natural compared to Lelouch and Cece. Cece for the most part just wanted her wish to come true, so she didn't really care about what kind of person Lelouch is. There is a scene where Lelouch told Cece that to defeat the evil, they have to become a greater evil. And she replied that in this way, the evil will always remain in the world. This means that she doesn't agree with it, but she is too disconnected from the real world and only cares about her own wishes, which makes their relationship lack the type of drama that Lelouch and Kellen had. Lelouch doesn't share with Kellen for two reasons. She will stop him from crossing the line and also because he cares for her and wants her to be away from him for her benefit. This is a typical distancing for her own good trope. But Lelouch and Kellen do have talks. They talk about the way they view the world and their philosophies. They didn't start liking each other out of nowhere. They both analyze what type of person the other is and what their principles are. Also, Kellen would have never let Lelouch go on a suicide mission like Cece did. These are some of the main reasons why I prefer Lelouch and Kellen. Talking about Shirley, she is one of the worst parts of the show. I hate it when girls love a guy for no reason, even if he basically ignores her most of the time. The only reason she fell in love with him is that he was mysterious, and she even forgave him for killing her own father out of nowhere, which literally make no sense at all. So do tell me which ship do you prefer? 
Now let's come to the ending. Now this might be unpopular but Code Geass doesn't have a good ending. When Lelouch got to know about his father's plan, he realized that his father was the same as him. He sacrificed too much for his goal, his attentions were good just like Lelouch and so did his mother who was still alive. He realized that he became the very thing that he swore to destroy unintentionally. And then they didn't properly explain his plan, but I guess it was something like what Gendo was doing in Evangelion, joining all the souls forever. And they also didn't explain why Lelouch and Suzaku didn't agree with it. They just didn't. And CC was passive as usual. So Lelouch killed both of them. It's ironic how Lelouch wanted to avenge his mother throughout the show, but in the end killed her himself. Now the main theme of the show was to the end, justify the means. From this scene we can conclude that they don't. Code Geass clearly stated that the end doesn't justify the means and that was the reason why the writer decided that his death at the end was him paying for his sins. However, what happened after that totally ruined Lelouch's character arc. Lelouch after learning his lesson should have changed his ways as the show clearly criticized it before but instead he did even worse. Now to achieve his goal he shed way more blood than he ever did. What's worse is that he said that he is even ready to sacrifice his own sister to reach his goal, which totally destroyed the main message of the show. He just became like his father and the show celebrated it, which doesn't make any sense. Lelouch now shed pools of blood everywhere, killed many people who tried to rebel against him so that he could become the common enemy of the world. Basically now the show suggests that end justifies the means. Moreover, CC didn't even try to stop him. Lelouch helped CC grow out of her trauma and saved his life. And in return, she let him remain in his trauma and let him die. This just makes CC looks like a selfish person. One of the main reasons why I prefer him with Kellen. But I also think that it was very out of character for CC to do that. Moreover, Lelouch left his sister to Suzaku, a man who killed his own father when he was defending his own country. No sane person would ever trust their loved ones with this guy, as he kills the oppressed ones just to stop a war. Not to mention his sister is just too young and can be easily used by other politicians. Nobody would let Suzaku remain there and not reveal his identity. Especially they won't allow a man who was a symbol of resistance against their country to be masked forever. All of this was very impractical. Not to mention how unsatisfying the defeat of the main villain was. Lelouch just used his Gia's powers on the god unconscious power and that's it, the main villain was defeated. It was the most unsatisfying final watch defeat ever. Moreover, after Lelouch used his all Gia's to grant CC her wish, he should have become immortal. If he didn't, then CC should have remained immortal. And if CC is immortal, then it's again very awful because after a point in time, she will get tired and would want to leave this world again. Also, there is no solution to the Gia's powers. Again, many bad things will happen to gain those powers. His peace won't even last for a decade as humanity will always fight. People won't forget the oppression the Britain Empire inflicted on the other countries for centuries just just because of a two months dictator. Not to mention how unnecessary his actions were. Why did he even do whatever he did? It's because he wanted to unite the world. But it's so funny because the world was already united. A UN where all countries were included was already formed. Like what did they even achieve from all this? They formed a UN after all of this. But they already formed a UN before this requiem plan. His last plan was totally unnecessary. Coming on Ichiro's comment that it was about him paying for his sins. Then as many have already countered this point, there are many other characters in the show who did way worse than Lelouch and are still alive. Not to mention that they just did it for fun and not because they had good goals like Lelouch. And again, those people are very dangerous for the peace he created. So this ending was a mess. A good ending would be Lelouch actually changing after learning his lessons, being more honest and not sacrificing when it's not absolutely important. Being more honest with his loved ones, with Black Knights, telling them what actually happened with Euphemia. Telling Karen everything and then her accepting that and finally connecting with the real Lelouch, which she always wanted and thus their relationship also having the development that they deserved. And it would also help Lelouch in putting that baggage of responsibility off his shoulders. He would be more connected with his people, with Kalen, which would release his stress as hiding his real self from others really stretched him out. 
this would also be a great message and then all of them gathering up against the main villain who was his father in this way lelouch would finally get the development that he was supposed to have and this would have given a much better message we could see a bit of this in resurrection movie where he was more mature he didn't sacrifice his army as pawns and he was honest with his loved ones but it was not enough so that was the journey of lelouch and he is still my favorite main character but i wish he had a better ending 